أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين نهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Yeah, so it's about 20 to 7 now. Just finished my morning session of learning how to code. Just currently studying a bit of Python. Yeah, I've done about over an hour of that. And uh, was just learning how to read files using Python and how to kind of strip the white space out of the lines that you're pulling and a few bits in. It took me a little while to figure it out because I couldn't get the file path correct. And then the, was, uh, the file types were RTF, which is like a rich text format or whatever on Mac so I had to figure out how to change it to a text document so that it didn't print all these weird characters but anyway it's actually quite fun but now I need to do some CCSP study because that's kind of my priority right now uh, so yeah let's get into it just shout out Charles Severance I'm doing the Python for everybody the full university Python course on YouTube I'll quickly say as well just while my PC is booting up I tend to do my CCSB practice questions on my work laptop uh, just sign into like a portal I've got and then yeah and the reason I do that is because I keep an eye on emails and check my messages early in the morning just so I know what my day looks like so I'm not necessarily working but I just do it on my work laptop because I also look at my calendar understand what meetings I've got for the day sometimes I have to drop the work because I've got an emergency email type of thing or messages that I just need to deal with so but yeah just signed in check the email slack messages etc nothing crazy urgent to deal with I did quickly message one of the account managers to send a PO to one of our clients that we kind of won over yesterday so I had like an opening exploratory discovery type call with them late afternoon and they agreed to you know take our services further so now it passes over to finance and sales so they can sort all that side out but i typically just start the work anyway once we've got that agreed thing i've worked with this client before as well so it's not like a brand new client where i have to wait for the finance to come through so that's typically what you do if there's a bit of trust you can kind of start the work and it's just how it works anyway nothing major to deal with i do have some early morning meetings um couple with clients couple new clients discovery calls um literally starting at nine o'clock i hate nine o'clock meetings but it has to be done sometimes like meetings before 10 o'clock and after like three o'clock should be illegal and between like 12 and 2 for lunch so realistically i just want meetings between 10 and 12 and maybe after one or two and that's it but it's not always like that sometimes i'm in 10 meetings a day sometimes i'm in one or two or and very rarely i'm in none but yeah got a few meetings so that's for later but for now i'm still focused on studying ccsp haven't officially started work actually going to be doing some questions i got wrong so because of doing that i kind of take a little bit more time so normally how i would work is I would do 50 questions and then see what time it is, maybe do another 50 just to practice and read through, etc. But this time I'm actually doing 20 questions because these are the questions I got wrong. So out of 600 odd questions, there were 70 that were wrong. So what I do is I go through them very carefully and take my time and I actually write down my weak areas. So this is just good notes. So what I'll do is I'll write down some weak areas things I need to go over so I know these are my weak areas and and you know what I've been doing recently is actually 
I'll ask ChatGPT about this. So for example, ASVS application security verification standard. I'll Google it. I'll ask ChatGPT, what is this? Can you explain this to me from the CCSP perspective? It's actually got a CCSP plugin, which is really cool. But anyway, I tend to kind of go back and forth while learning it and trying to understand it. But I do also sometimes open up one of the books and kind of go through it there it just depends on what it is yeah so let's get into it 20 questions um carefully writing notes down for where i went wrong and trying to understand and learn about it so i just finished the first 20 questions i did get quite a few wrong like 10 so 50 percent, which is actually terrible but i did learn from it what i'm going to do now is do another 20 different questions um that i've also got wrong in the past and the objective here to be honest at this stage you know i'm about six weeks out of my exam is not to actually get a lot of questions right and rank highly it's more about actually learning and understanding and digesting the information so what i do is for the questions and areas i get wrong as i said earlier as i use chat gpt and go through the book and you know research online but i also have like kind of a dedicated few pages where i make kind of neat notes and write it out so i think this is very important because when i actually spend a lot of time creating notes that are colorful and, and i've thought about what parts of that topic i want to capture it kind of registers a bit more i don't do this for the whole book because i take forever i typically just type up notes that i can read later and i try not to take a lot of notes as i go through the course in the book because i've touched on the topics through previous exams and other things it's just the kind of weak areas is where i spend a lot of time taking notes thinking about digesting and understanding it's quite early it's like quarter past seven so i want to do another 20 questions before i do that and i'll probably spend about half an hour doing that so yes next 20 questions here we go <laughs> Okay, so I did a little bit better on that one. I got 15 out of 20 right, which is still bad. But again, it's not about the score at this stage. It's about learning. So I took notes of all the areas that I got wrong, struggled with, wasn't really familiar or comfortable with. And what I'm going to do is do some research, take some neat notes, learn from them and try and use whatever methods I can to try and remember them which involves a lot of staring at a screen and thinking to be honest but before we do that I've been sitting down for like two hours now or something like that so I'm gonna get up I need to do a few house chores get some meat out for later because I'm gonna be cooking today uh, so yeah I just need to pull that out to defrost and just walk around the house for a little bit to kind of stretch my legs so yeah be back in a bit so yeah got the meat out to the frost and if you're thinking that's a mad amount of meat it actually is there's only three of us me my wife and my son but tomorrow i'm going to like a mosque iftar thing and it's like customary to bring some food so kind of break fast at the mosque together and everyone's going to bring a little bit of food so i'm taking some chicken that i'm going to season today so it's ready for tomorrow and i can just pop it in the oven before i go and yeah got some kind of meat out for today as well for the family normally they'd be awake and i'd have my son running around by now and just like messing around and playing with him this is kind of the time when it's family time but today he's at my mom's because it's like the half term and he stays there for a few days during the half term the holiday period when he's off school so yeah he's just at my mom's having fun doing his thing which is cool because you know he gets to see the family and it also gives me time to kind of really focus and get stuff done so yeah now i've just had a little walk around and stretch kind of back to work let's get to it before that i forgot i need to actually feed the cats so you're gonna meet the cats now so you've got Sonny here, which is a big boy, and then you've got a little Daisy too. So yeah, these are the two cats. I didn't want cats at all. I don't really like pets, but to be honest, um, my wife wanted cats. I didn't want cats, so we compromised and we got two cats. So yeah, here we are. Time to feed them. Okay, so now I'm actually doing a little bit of research on one of the items that I got wrong, and it was to do with dynamic secrets in cloud computing. Now, this is nice because it's actually quite a simple concept to understand, and 
won't take me very long you know at times there are some bigger topics that i do need to learn about such as like itil v4 or stride and pasta which involves a lot of memorization and different types of testing which will take me a little bit of time to kind of read and understand and actually go through each different type and be able to create something but this dynamic secrets is an easy concept to understand so i'm going to create something on my ipad and show you how i learn and remember it there we go so what i have here is essentially dynamic secrets a kind of definition which is a security mechanism designed to give temporary access in the cloud and i've got a few notes here on some of the benefits a little bit more about what it does just kind of quick few bullet points and what i do have here is similar to jit which is just in time provisioning now i know it's completely different technically speaking but for me how my mind mind works is I had to learn a lot about just-in-time provisioning to pass the CISSP exam. Essentially it creates credentials and gives you access to something just before you use a resource and dynamic secrets kind of work in the same way as in they give you temporary access to something. Let's say an engineer needed access to a server in the cloud for one day to do work. A dynamic secret would be a key that would validate his access just for a day before kind of revoking it. And it's quite automated because it will revoke automatically as opposed to you generating a key for them, giving them access and remembering to remove it, remove their access a day later, which of course, as you scale to thousands of users, etc., this becomes very problematic so having it automated makes a lot of sense so that's dynamic secrets it's one of the questions i got wrong and the reason i got it wrong was because i didn't realize that this one of the benefits of this is actually heavily to do with audit so yeah i need to kind of be able to relate this to benefits and audit so i have stare at this for a while and just think about it um, before moving on to the next topic. So yeah, that's how I would learn and try and kind of fill in the gaps on my knowledge to pass this exam. But anyway, I've got a meeting in an hour. I do need to do a little work, just preparation for that. I do want to try and go on a quick walk as well before my meeting. But let's get to it. it. Literally took me five minutes to, to quickly prepare for that meeting, which is a lot quicker than normal. But essentially, I'm just waiting on the client to provide documentation and evidence because I'm auditing them at the minute and helping them kind of achieve a security standard which is to do with like the healthcare sector and the NHS here in the UK they need to reach a certain level of security to be able to continue to deliver services so yeah just waiting for the evidence they have provided some but yeah I'm just going to catch up with them they're probably going to have some questions about the exact evidence I want to see maybe some specific challenges of course because of confidentiality I can't go into a lot of detail what that might be typically clients will not understand what types of documents they need to provide or how they can meet the control it's normally like unpacking it and breaking it down to them and saying you know typically with organizations like yours you'll have this process or this type of document or you'll have this within the department and you kind of talk around it until they understand what it might be because every organization is different and then my next call after that is a kind of opening discovery expiratory call which i've never spoke to the client before and for those i don't prepare anything i used to you know i used to actually prepare too much and i realized that was a big mistake because you can go into a meeting and you've got all these assumptions about what the company does because you've looked at the website or what they want what type of security service they could want from you and you kind of prepare in the wrong area and you waste a lot of time and I learned that through wasting a lot of time preparing for clients looking at their website thinking oh they do this well really they have a huge business that does so many random things and they need help with one specific bit that isn't even on their website you know that's happened before also sometimes I might say we need help with our compliance program but realistically they actually you need something completely different like a network architecture review and you know i get involved in that a little bit but i'm not an expert in that area so i'll get one of the security engineers or network security engineers to kind of get involved and help out and probably take over most of the project it's a pretty small team at my company which is pretty cool because you kind of get involved and exposed to a lot and you know, we all work very well together. So it's a nice environment, pretty flat structure, management are great. Yeah. Okay. So now I kind of know what I'm doing for the day. I do have a project for a client that I need to complete. So that's not on a meeting. That's going to be basically going through spreadsheets and marking and reviewing and looking at stuff and 
evidence and commentary and back and forth, adding my thoughts to it, etc. And then kind of sending it back to them. But I will do that later, but it shouldn't take long, probably an hour. So for now, it's just nearly eight o'clock. So I'm actually going to get ready and go on a little walk. Come on then. So yeah, this is part of my morning routine normally, just going for a walk. It's uh, quite nice where I live, it's quite green. And uh, you get, you know, typical damp English wet weather. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get used to this vlogging thing. I'm trying to record it. It's not really, I don't know where to put it. But anyway, as you can see, it's kind of just random greenland foresty type environments the kind of place you'd probably come to to you know bury a body or something anyway um i normally just got my airpods in listen to some quran in the morning uh sometimes i listen to a podcast or something interesting or a lot of the times it's nothing just a kind of quiet mind just to be able to think clearly before starting work. So yeah, um, one thing I'll say as well is I've got these kind of walking shoes on, which is a big discovery for me because I used to just walk with normal trainers, you know, like whatever, Nike, Adidas, Air Maxis, whatever it is. And I realized it's actually really bad for your feet. So you need proper like soul things. So I went to this place and they did like something called a gait analysis. So gait, how you walk. And they analyzed my walking and said, yep, you need this type of shoe to make your posture and walking and running better. So yeah, now I've got these kind of proper walking or running shoes that I use. And yeah, um, it's about, been out here for about 15 minutes not only it's just a quick short one in the morning so i think i'm gonna head back now so it's like a half an hour walk or round trip so it should be about half eight when i get back uh yeah see you there yeah just got back from the walk um just have to go to the shop as well to get some bread ended up speaking to an old lady about chicken dates on the bread or whatever but yeah it's always important i guess just to smile at people be friendly speak to them say good morning be disarming especially for me you know i've come from quite a rough area so the way i was raised there or grew up there is completely different to these kind of nice areas that i live in now thank god i'm doing that so yeah i mean it, it's not one of those areas where you walk around everyone's like screw facing ready to start a fight and carrying weapons and gangs and whatever else you get in certain areas which is unfortunately quite bad in the uk but at the same time you know people under those circumstances aren't necessarily bad you know a lot of people are just brought up in a really tough and bad environment and I've certainly had a lot of people, friends, people close to me that you can't even blame for living a certain kind of life. If your dad, your brothers, your uncles, your whole family are involved in certain things, you kind of inherit a lot of trouble, which is quite common. And a lot of people don't necessarily choose that life, but it, yeah, they have very little options. And another thing is when you're growing up in a bad area, in the UK in particular, you're not really seeing a lot of opportunities. Not everyone who's got money is either a drug dealer or doing something of a criminal nature you know these kind of council estates and rough areas you don't see any accountants or it people or cyber security professionals and you don't know about that world it's kind of like the only inspiration you have is negative inspiration but fortunately with the internet you know you can access a lot of new information and things but yeah some people just haven't had the privilege of the opportunity and alhamdulillah thank god i had a good family good parents who wanted better for us my siblings also successful mashallah my family was career orientated you know i had a stable family structure so i had a lot that a lot of my friends and people i grew up with just didn't have so you always got to be grateful for your own privilege and never judge people and never look down on people so that's kind of my philosophy is just be polite friendly to everyone show a lot of love everywhere you go but at the same time don't be an idiot you know be ready to defend yourself if something happens or someone tries to attack you or your family you know you always got to be on guard but anyway 
about to actually fully start work then we've got a meeting in about 15 minutes so i thought i'd take this time to quickly tell you a little bit about what i'm going to be doing today and a little bit about cyber security or the grc workday as you will with cyber security there's so many different roles and jobs um, for those who don't know, like loads. And the one I do is actually kind of an arm of governance, risk management and compliance, commonly known as GRC. But even within that, you have many niches. So I'm actually a security consultant for an MSSP, which is a managed security service provider. So my company has a bunch of technical people, a bunch of SAC analysts, a full-time security operations center, 24 seven. Literally these guys don't stop working ever. I mean, they do shifts, obviously they rotate and whatnot, but 24 seven, 365, they're open every day on Christmas, on New Year's day, whatever, whatever. They're open every day. That's kind of one side of the business. And then you've got like security network engineers who deal with like firewalls and communications and network architecture. We also have offensive security consultants, so like literally hackers. These are like, like ethical hackers who will hack a company and be like, this is how I got in, this is a report, etc. You've met one of them before if you've been watching this channel for a while because we did a podcast together. It was actually my first podcast, Piyush Sharma. Shout out Piyush. But anyway, so what I do is the kind of GRC consulting. So I tend to get involved in quite a lot, to be honest, a little bit of everything. But I guess my main speciality is a company comes to me and they need to get compliant with a specific standard or framework or certification. So it can be anything from Cyber Essentials, Cyber Essentials Plus, ISO 27001. Um, we have the DSPT, which is a data security and protection toolkit. Some American standards, sometimes they want advice on data privacy, etc, etc. It can literally be anything another big part is like uh, tenders bids questionnaires third party risk management that's a huge part of my role too and sometimes it can be policy development helping them with processes and that's kind of my consulting role i do also have internal responsibilities for the company and the group wide but we won't get into that that's too long and i'm not doing that today anyway so maybe if i did another one of these i'll talk about that side of my role so my first meeting is one of these meetings with a client and how this works is a client pays pays my company, which pays me and I speak to the client basically. So they just pay me for my time and I just give them my advice and that's it really. I mean, that's, that, that's it in a nutshell when it comes to consulting, you just get paid to talk. I mean, yesterday I literally talked for like four hours. I was fasting, my mouth was dry. It was difficult, not four hours straight, obviously different clients, but literally that's kind of what you do. And the advice to me at this stage in my career seems like common sense because I've studied so much and I've got certain certifications, but for clients, it's actually like crazy life-changing for their company and their organization because I'm giving them like a security strategy or advice to fix certain problems. I'm actually adding a lot of value to them. That's why they're willing to pay my company a lot of money for a consultant's time, such as myself. Now, unfortunately, I'm the only GRC consultant, so I don't actually have a senior to lean on. I do have one or two people that kind of work with the company, but they work in a kind of part-time capacity and don't get involved in everything day to day but they are really senior and they do know a lot more than me about GRC but fortunately they're not actually like full time so I don't get to work with them as much as I'd like to because I like working with senior people. I hate being the guy who knows the most about GRC in my company. It actually annoys me because in every company I've worked for previously I've had like senior compliance people, senior GRC folk that I've worked with that I can learn from. And I've noticed that when I was in those roles, I just learned every day, not even by necessarily talking to them, sometimes just listening to them or watching them in a meeting or whatever. You kind of just pick up a lot just by being around senior people. So thankfully I pick up quite a lot from like the ethical hacking, the technical side, the networking side, etc., which is great. But yeah, I just don't like being the only guy, but it is what it is. It's a good job, I love the team, I love the company. And typically how a day is structured in a GRC person's role is your work is project-based. Now what that means is you're not on a clock, okay? So let me give you an example. If you've got a SOC analyst, they need to be monitoring alerts from like, let's say it's nine till five, that is their job. Nine o'clock, they have to be signed in because they've 
handing over from a different analyst and the other analyst would come in be like this is what's happened this is what's going on you need to take a look at this blah 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 here's what's outstanding this is what i had time for i didn't get time to check this can you please do that and they kind of hand over take on the work and then they do the work from you know nine till five or nine till nine or however long the shift is yeah they'll do their thing sometimes if something goes crazy they'll stay on a bit longer and it's a similar for like support roles if you've ever worked in it support or it service support or the service desk you know you handle tickets from a particular time or an event with grc it's completely different it's more like a project management role where a client will say we need to get this done in two years or in one year or in six months or in three months or in one month or whatever it may be typically it's a longer term project but sometimes they will say we need to do the impossible in a month and you have to work with them very hard and they have to get a lot of people involved and it gets crazy but normally you have time they're normally quite clever they plan ahead they're like there's this change in this certification that we need to get ready for or we've just entered into a new market and this market actually has this regulation that we need to comply with and that's kind of my job is to help them with that so one i have to know the regulation the standard the security framework whatever it is inside out to be able to help them i have to know a lot about their company how it's set up how it works what the kind of structure is who the it security people are what business functions they have etc like understand how things work the processes of business and typically once you've understood a business and kind of work with them a while on different projects you know how things are set up so it makes it easier but at the beginning you don't so that's why it's important to have like exploratory discovery type of calls and meetings and you need to really take time to understand how things operate because every company is different and the companies i work for could literally be one of these brand new ai companies that need security advice and there's a lot of them cropping up that i've been working with or it could be something like a company that's been around for 30 or 40 years in the healthcare sector that you know i'm working with or or in the it sector or whatever it may be so yeah it's project-based work it's long term and what's good about that in my opinion is that you can work on your own time more or less as in the clients don't care your managers typically don't care your directors or whoever do not care when you start when you finish when you're taking a break all that kind of stuff all they care is about that you get the job done by the deadline and as i said the deadline can be like one year it can be six months it can be one month two months three months so you've got a lot of agency to just do what you want as long as you get the job done nobody cares so one thing is you know you can't miss a call you can't miss a meeting of course if you book a meeting you honor it you show up so other than meetings the rest of the work can just be done whenever you want now of course there's a caveat that most people want meetings and office hours so you typically have to work office hours but it's very flexible like i can literally like today for example what i literally did was i just blocked out an hour because i've got a doctor's appointment later i didn't have to tell anyone i didn't have to say oh Oh, can I have this time off? Can someone cover me? Nobody needs to cover me because I'm dealing with a project and as long as I deliver the project on time, it's done. However, if you're a SOC analyst or if you work in service desk or another kind of IT role where it's like time and service based where you're doing something like that, if you needed an hour off, you might be the only person on shift or there might be two of you, but there needs to be two of you. You need to ask someone else on the team, can you cover me for an hour while I pop out, etc. I've worked them kind of jobs and it's pretty cool. I'm not saying it's difficult. My most of the time, if you've got a nice team, people cover for each other. I remember covering for people, they covered for me. Pop out for lunch, pop out for whatever. But you, you know, your lunch needs to be structured. Like when you go on lunch, someone needs to be not on lunch. You can't go to lunch together type of thing. And yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons I just love GRC is it's just flexible throughout your day. I could literally take this afternoon off if I wanted to and just start early tomorrow and make the time up and get the work done tomorrow. No one's going to really notice or care that I did that it doesn't affect them because at the end of the day the client's going to pay the company and I'll get paid as long as the job gets done by the end of the month or whenever it finishes so yeah that's a really important thing about the structure of GRC and the workday and how it works and yeah the only real time commitments that you have are meetings everything else is flexible you can do the work whenever you want to do it so yeah anyway i've got five minutes before my call so i'm just going to quickly get ready look over what i need to just refresh my mind on the last communications with the client and where we're at i already kind of know but i'm just going to double check so yeah it's just five to nine now so i'm just about to officially start my 
work day and yeah i will see you in probably a couple of hours when i've finished my meetings so yes i've just finished my first couple of meetings for the day and it's crazy because it ended up actually being three meetings and i've got another one in a minute which I didn't anticipate and I've got another one after that I didn't anticipate and I've got another one that's been sent for the end of the day which is just a normal day to be honest I don't want to make out like this is a crazy day that's typically how things go you start off the day you might have one two three meetings in the calendar and then throughout the day it kind of just yeah gets busier and busier Anyway, I've got to jump into a call in a minute. I just wanted to make a quick update to the video and just say, yeah, more meetings and more meetings. And unfortunately, I'm trying to do the work in the background that I need to do for clients and a few other things, but I can't at the minute. So I will probably get to that later. Anyway, let's go calls, calls, calls. Okay, so just finished one of the meetings, uh, managed to do some work in the background and had a bit of time to get through some of the client work I needed to do, so that was cool. So now it is a quarter past 11 in the day, and I've got another call before I go on lunch or go on a little break. And it's quite interesting is today I'm actually doing a little bit of data analysis, data visualizations. So for those who don't know, I guess part of my skill set is to do a bit of data analysis, data visualizations, nothing complex, just using Power BI. And there's a slight issue with one of the reports which is so common power bi is so annoying always breaks stuff goes wrong and normally it's to do with data changes formatting the origin something just yeah basically changed something's gone wrong sometimes it's the export the whatever so gotta fix that gotta work on that so uh yeah we'll be doing that at some point today or we'll be doing that next after this call before I go on lunch, hopefully. Or at least make a start on it. I might not figure it out and fix it that quickly, but I think it's a minor issue. So it should be fairly straightforward. So yep, I'll see you in a bit. Uh, just about to go into a call now. So yes, 12.13 now, 12.34 to be exact. And I'm just finishing up calls, sent some messages out, did a bit of work for some clients, and now time for a break. So I am going to go and probably start to cook and season some meat not cook just season it get it ready make sure it's defrosted that kind of thing maybe soak it in water if it's not or get the season ready but yeah i'll show you that in a bit but anyway time to go downstairs so i have to cut some onion and some lemon and some garlic just as a base but it's like the base for every dish but just wanted to quickly point out that while i do that i am actually got my ipad here and i will be watching some Luke Ahmed study notes and theory videos for the CCSP. So while I am cooking, um, I always like to study in the background. And this is a different kind of study where, you know, you're not really testing yourself or taking a lot of information in and you're kind of semi distracted because your mind's thinking about cutting up a piece of onion or crushing a garlic or whatever. But you still do learn some stuff and it's good to kind of passively absorb knowledge but this is just something that i do for topics that i'm comfortable with but i just want to refresher on i wouldn't do this for something brand new like if i was trying to learn something that i've just never seen before this wouldn't be a good method to kind of absorb that information but yeah anyway i'll show you a little bit of the preparation once it's a little bit more done just peeling some garlic and onion at the minute okay so i've literally just washed the meat and uh, cut up an onions and garlic and stuff which is took me ages because of how long it's gonna take and i've got the meat kind of organized here there's a lamb and chickens all in there but anyway, I need to get the seasoning ready for it and I'll kind of show you how I do that in a little bit as well. So I've just realised, you know what, this whole food prep thing is going to take a lot longer than the little time I do have for a quick break before I've got to get back to the laptop and do some work and stuff. So yeah, it's kind of throwing a spider in the works because normally it's a quick prep because it's just prepping something for myself and my wife and my son or most of the time she'll probably cook or maybe order or something but ramadan's been a little bit different because i've been doing a lot of cooking in ramadan kind of why it is the way it is so the routine's thrown off a little bit but i normally would have used this time to either study do some youtube stuff some types of video editing i like to also film my videos on my lunch because the lighting's really good in uh 
my office at that time. So what I'm gonna do is leave the chicken for later and just get the lamb ready. Chicken doesn't have to be done till tomorrow, but the uh, lamb, the chops need to be ready for our evening meal tonight. So I'm just gonna season that and show you what it looks like when it's done. So I've got it all nearly ready. So I just wanted to kind of show you before it kind of goes on the meat, what's actually gonna go in there. So first it's some garlic, you know, pesto and mortared. Got some spring onion, red onion, white onion, all ready to go on. That's for the chicken. And then a mixture of some seasonings, mainly peppercorn. I've got this lamb seasoning, which is actually just garlic, coriander, chilies, onion, cumin, black pepper, cardamom, paprika, thyme, color, celery, stage, mint, whatever. Yeah, bit of that, bit of black pepper, light seasoning, maybe some crushed chilies on the top. If it was up to me, oh, and some of this jerk seasoning. If it was up to me, I'd probably have a thick layer of seasoning. I might put some paprika on there as well. I'd put a thicker layer on, but my wife and son like stuff to be lightly seasoned. Yeah, so I'll... Do what I can, see how it goes. So, yes, um, just putting the seasoning on the meats now, nearly done. I just wanted to quickly say kind of the origins of the food in terms of, you know, where you get the recipe and how you, how I cook it. Well, to be honest, it's kind of like just a few years of like mixing, matching, learning, watching people do it, different inspirations from different videos and things online and watching family. So like, uh, but I'd say mainly it's probably for my mother. She's a really good cook, so yeah. It's kind of learning from her, to be honest, watching her, listening to her. Yeah, you learn from other people when it comes to cooking and most of it's experimentation. I'd like to think I'm a good cook, got loads of good reviews, but well, yeah, we'll let the food be the judge of that. And just another note is that with your meat, personally, I always wash the meat. Yeah, you've got to wash your meat with salt, water, lemon, vinegar. You know, just kind of soak it for a little bit. Give it a little rub. Just make sure that it's clean. I know a lot of people don't wash their meat, or some people don't at least, but for me, I can't cook meat without washing it. And cleaning it as well, you know, getting all the bits off. The chicken might have little feather feather things, whatever they're called. That's kind of what makes this take long. I mean, especially when you're cooking a big load of chicken. I remember one time I was cooking chicken and I had like family coming around, must have been about 20, 30 of us. Honestly, I'm not even lying to you. I spent th three hours just cleaning the meat. Like just literally washing it with lemon water and like using a knife to like get all the feathers and gunky bits off and getting all the nasties off basically the meat. But yeah, it took me three hours, but you know, that's what you do because that's how you cook. You gotta cook clean, clean up after, get the wife to clean up or someone else who didn't cook, you know, that kind of rule where I cook you clean type of thing. I like that. But yeah, so let's show you the meat. So this is what the lamb's come out like, you know, just seasoned it. Yeah, rubbed all the meat in as you can see by my hands. I rubbed all the seasoning in, sorry, as you can see by my hands. So yeah, I've got some of the onions and everything as well at the bottom. It's going to be cooked with it. So yeah, I'm going to probably put this in the grill on the oven. Don't know, we'll sort it out later. But yeah, it just needs to sit and season. The meat just needs to absorb all the flavour from all the random bits and bombs that I've used. Take its time. It'll take about at least half an hour if you're in a rush. You know, let the meat sit for half an hour and soak up the flavour. But ideally, the day before, or at least a couple of hours is best. But yeah, the chicken is not done. That's still just soaking in some uh, lemon water there. But it's not even defrosted, so I'm gonna leave that to later. But anyway, no time. So yeah, just got back to work. Um, and you can see what I mean by the lighting. It's a lot better, especially if I'm not facing this way. But anyway, just to make it easy, I'm still facing this way. So yeah, just got back, got a few emails, just building up. Do have a meeting or two later and the doctor's appointment, which is virtual. Yeah, so I've got to do a little bit of work and just reply to some emails at this stage, just catch up, you know, no emails in yet, just deal with any emergencies. And um, I've got next week off, so I need to like wind down and make sure that all my next week stuff's sorted and 
I've got someone to at least reply or deal with any emergencies until I'm back. And if need to be, I'll be on call and I have to work overtime, but I really don't want to because it's the last few days of Ramadan and it's Eid. Otherwise, I wouldn't really mind. Sometimes I take time off to work on my own stuff or study or post videos, but right now to take time off in Eid and Ramadan when I'm supposed to be with the family and celebrating isn't something I want to do. So, I need to make sure everything's done, be as efficient, as organised as possible, and uh, I need to actually pray in a bit as well. So, I'm going to pray Dhuhr, which is the second prayer of the day. So, what you see me do at the beginning of the video would be praying Fajr, morning prayer, and now this is the kind of noon prayer. Okay, so, yeah, see you in a little bit. Okay, so, just finished replying to a ton of emails. Uh, I've got an interview later where uh, I want to be on a panel interviewing someone. So yeah, I need to prepare for that, read their CV, maybe like do a bit of stalking on LinkedIn, kind of see what they've got in projects or experience or yeah, just look at them as a person and give them a recommendation. So the decision is not up to me in the end, but I just kind of have input and um, just give people my thoughts on what I thought about the person. Anyway, that's later. So I'm going to pray now um, for her and then I am going to do my virtual doctor's appointment. <laughs> and uh should be fun so yeah just kind of wrapping up for the day now the last few hours i'm going to interview someone in a little bit so one last meeting and yeah just been kind of emailing back and forth and catching up with like slack messages and teams messages and emails and scheduling and all that kind of stuff for the next few weeks so it's a lot of planning a lot of back and forth kind of got all the meat of the work that i plan to do today and it's just yeah just replying to stuff and planning for when the next things are going to be done and um keep getting updates catching up with people so yeah i'm gonna catch up with someone in a little bit just before the interview and then I'm gonna actually complete the interview but before that what i might actually do is nip downstairs and see if i can progress a bit more with that chicken so yeah i've been thinking about that chicken i want to get that stuff done so yeah i think i'm gonna do that now actually and what i'll probably do is have the catch up on my mobile phone so yeah can literally work and do a bit of chicken in the background instead of you know chicken and studying so but i'll take my ipad down as well in case it's a quick call and then i can just watch some more ccp videos one other thing to mention actually and what i have kind of been doing and have done as well in between is working a little bit on my phone so so doing some stuff on my phone not necessarily for work but for kind of the youtube channel i got notion updating stuff looking at brain inbox um replying to like messages on like linkedin and looking at comments looking at youtube analytics and stuff i think i've only had the chance to do that once today so probably a 10-15 minute session of just kind of keeping up with the channel and stuff but yeah i mean most of the time that i would have spent doing more of that today has been actually filming these so yeah the time it would have took to film these the two three minutes that i kind of get here and there is the time i'd normally pull out my phone quickly reply to some comments or linkedin messages or maybe do some planning for my next video maybe some research yeah and um in between that it's just a lot of studying and sometimes as well if i've got a bit longer what i'll try and do is a fit like a quick five or ten questions in so for the ccsp exam for my training and studying i do often do like if I finish a meeting early and I've got like 10 minutes I'll do a quick five ten questions type of thing so it's just trying to find gaps in between parts of your day to fit other things to do in for like long-term stuff I'm working on mainly my studying mainly the YouTube building the channel building the brand yeah anyway let's get downstairs get my headphones get on a call and catch up with a few colleagues back in the kitchen to finish my ketchup and i just wanted to show you this so it looks kind of nasty you got your onion your garlic some cinnamon peppercorn black corn ginger oil everything just mixed in there at the minute apart from the seasoning so um this is going to go in a blender and i'm going to kind of make a marinade for the chicken so i'll show you what it's like at the end but just to show it to you before it gets blended and this thing's quite small i need to actually buy a bigger blender so i'm gonna put it in here mix it up a bit yeah i'll show you what it comes out like so yeah now this might look crazy brown yeah and it might look a little disgusting but trust me this is actually beautiful stuff so this is kind of like the the marinade that i've made it's a bit like a jerk kind of seasoning like jerk chicken seasoning 
but I've kind of adapted it. So you've got the whole nutmeg, pimento, cinnamon, black pepper, browning sauce, onion, garlic, spring onion, jerk seasoning, just a mixture of stuff. Like I could not even tell you everything. Brown sugar as well in there. Put a bit of vegetable oil. Normally I use olive oil, but I've run out. And yeah, I can't be bothered going shop. So yeah, trust me. This, once the chicken's clean and ready, let it kind of, you know, rub it into the chicken, massage it in and let it sit for like a day. Oh my God. Put that chicken in the oven or put it in a barbecue the next day it'll be the best thing you've ever had and what's sick about this is you can put it in tubs and you can keep it in the fridge so it's good for two or three weeks so you know because there's so much onion and garlic in there it can't really fester or grow any uh whatever they're called germs go off moldy whatever because there's so much garlic and onion and it'll just kill all that off so it's good for a good couple of weeks in the fridge anyway if you want to keep it and then marinate chicken that day a day and you can switch it up put different stuff in there and try it out but this is how i like to season chicken just make a nice blend their style marinade but it is quite time consuming but i'm doing it special because it's like a musk meal everyone's bringing their local food so yeah should be good but anyway that's done now which is the main thing so let's get it on the chicken in a bit after it's clean i feel like this has turned into some cooking uh vlog you know i don't know people probably click on this video hoping to get some cyber security advice understand what a day in a life is like but yeah this is just a day in my life gotta be real can't lie to you you know you work hard but also gotta prepare food i love my food as you can see so gotta eat gotta get it ready okay i'll see you in the next one when the chicken's ready well marinated i'm done with marinating the chicken and season it and everything so it's all sitting in here now i don't know if you can tell but this is just going to be banging if only you could smell this it smells like i don't know like a blend of nutmeg cinnamon pepper a bit of chili ginger just like a blended oh i can't even describe it it just smells amazing but yeah this is going to be cooked tomorrow so i'm going to leave it to marinate overnight which lets the uh, marinade sink deeper into the meat you can already see it's kind of changed the color but you can still see a few like white bits there so overnight that'll kind of all go and it'll sink deeper into it now it's just a case of cleaning up and antibacterial the sides of antiseptic and all that cleaning stuff because my wife's not here unfortunately to help me out like she was earlier so i'm gonna have to do this quick time and then yeah put this in the fridge ready for tomorrow man what a day but yeah just finished the interview bit of work feedback on the person being interviewed kind of sharing thoughts etc anyway now it's time to put the chicken on and i was actually going to play with my son and do a few things with him but he's just fell asleep for a nap with my wife because we're all fasting apart from my son he's only a bit baby a little kid is isn't fast, but because my wife and I are fasting and my son has been going to the mosque as well late with my mum and dad when he stayed there last night. They throw on everybody's routine off so everyone's sleeping and napping at weird times and, you know, waking up early or staying up really late or whatever it is. So everyone's asleep in the house. He's going to probably be asleep for a good two hours or so. So I'm going to take advantage and put the food on and then go to the gym. So yeah, on to the gym after I put the food on. On the way to the gym now, I just did have a bit of extra time, so I thought I might as well shave my head quickly because uh, it's getting a bit long. I noticed it this morning actually um, when I was doing the press ups and uh, that video. I watched it back and I thought, damn, I look bald. But yeah, I tend to just shave it myself these days. Sometimes I go barbers if I want like a nicer cut because they can do a nice shape up and trim around it. But I don't always have the time. It's just quicker, just at home. Just boom, shave it myself with a clipper. 20 minutes, then hop in the shower and it's done rather than getting ready, driving to the barbers, booking an appointment. Sometimes you get there, they're late, and you know, it can take hours sometimes. So I used to be one of them guys that used to get like a trim every single week, literally. I was always had like that nice fade and that before I lost my hair and for those who don't know I blame cyber security for losing my hair what I like to do when I train um because it's Ramadan I train a little different because it's like you know you're fasting you haven't drank anything all day you haven't eaten you can't have a protein shake or you know whatever bar or like anything to kind of get you ready like a banana or something beforehand um so I'll just do what I can, to be honest. And my bare minimum, every time I come to gym anyway, regardless of it's Ramadan or not, is I start every session with like 30 pull-ups. So three sets of 10, 
10, 10, 10 pull-ups and then I'll do, well, I'll superset it. So I'll do, while I'm doing the pull-ups, I'll do press-ups or dips. So one of the two. So 30 pull-ups, 30 dips or 30 pull-ups and like 60 press-ups. And I do them funky kind of press-ups like either on my knuckles or turn my hands kind of like inverted. So it kind of hits a different part of your chest. It's not normal press-up. I don't really do normal press-ups at the gym. I don't know why. I do them at home, but yeah, anyway. So yeah, that's kind of my bare minimum. And then obviously I'll do my actual, then I'll do some skipping as well with that. So skipping, pull-ups, dips, and then, or pull-ups, press-ups, and then I'll do my actual body part. So today I'm gonna to be doing shoulders and a little bit of legs because I did like half a leg session the other day because I was just absolutely shattered uh, from fasting and I couldn't really, I didn't have the energy to do like a proper full on leg session. So I'm gonna do my kind of outstanding legs that I should have done the other day and a little bit of shoulders um, but to be honest if I do my pull-ups, dips, press-ups all that stuff, bit of skipping and, I've, and I'm tired and I feel like nah, that's it, call it a day um, I will just kind of yeah, just call it a day and go home, you know, I'm not really obsessed with completing each body part when I do go like nowadays I go gym on a casual one just to feel good, a bit of stress relief I'm not training for anything, I'm not fighting, I'm not competing. I've got nothing to train for other than my own kind of health and well-being. So yeah, I'll just do what makes me feel good when I'm fasting and when I'm not fasting, I might uh, go a bit harder. But alhamdulillah, still can still aim to push heavy. No point going light, still got to try hard. It's only if like, you know when your body's telling you like, yo, you need to rest, you need to go home. Especially because, you know, I've been up from like five, so it's probably been like a, or half four or something. So it's probably been like a 12, 13 hour day already. It's half six now. So yeah, man, gotta take it easy. Take it easy, but go hard. But anyway, that don't make no sense, but it does to me. So yeah, I'm just pulling up now, nearly there. So I might try and catch a video in the gym. My friend's coming as well, so I might ask him to film something. Um, I don't really like taking videos in the gym. I'm not that guy, not anymore. I used to be vain photos, videos, all of that, but now I'm just like, I can't be bothered. I don't think I ever take videos or photos in the gym. The last one I did was probably that video I did for YouTube, for you guys when I was benching that 180. But right now, no videos planned. But we'll see, anyway, I'll see you in a bit. Yes, so I just finished the gym. It's about half. Uh, seven which means i've got like 20 minutes till i have to break fast and they're slipping everywhere i don't know what's going on but yeah 20 minutes so i'll be home in about five or ten so last 10 minutes before i break fast it's just prayers thanking allah for the food they're about to eat being appreciative grateful you know spending time with the family always start breaking the fast with date and some water and uh, yeah that's how it goes so yeah inshallah on the way back had a good gym session and then yeah we'll see what I'm doing afterwards but yeah I'll see you in the next update so yeah all done with the food now alhamdulillah thank god it's really nice the chops turned out great um and got the jerk chicken ready for tomorrow so i'm just about to pray and then i'm going to spend some time with the family play with my son um and then pray again and then wind down for bed really um so yeah before i go to bed i'm probably going to reread some of my ccsp notes do a few practice questions on my phone reply to emails and youtube stuff and see what i've missed over the day it's probably not much when i checked it earlier there wasn't much there but yeah i'll just check it again before i go to bed reply to a few things i'll also dive into my notion brain and see what's the plan for tomorrow um so yeah, trying to get ahead of it and maybe look at my calendar, kind of prepare mentally, I guess, for whatever meetings I've got in the morning or the afternoon or whatever. And yeah, if need to be, I'll log into work sometimes or I'll stay up late editing videos or do a few random bits. But tonight is just going to be a chill day because I haven't seen my son in a little bit because he's been at my mom. So I'll spend some time with the family and then yeah, just chill out and he can stay up late because it's a holiday, which is good. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you 
in the next one. I might chuck in a few pictures of how that jerk chicken turned out as well tomorrow in case you're interested. But yeah, hope you like this. Apologies for the weird vlogging format. I'm still getting used to this weird holding camera, walking. I need a cameraman, that's what I need. But yeah, like, comment, share and subscribe. See you in the next one.